welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's appraisal buzzcast. As always, make sure you're subscribed to get notified when we publish our latest episodes. Uh, today we have a special treat for you. We have the appraiser coach, Dustin Harris. I'm really excited to talk to him. I know he was the first podcast I ever heard on the appraisal industry, so it'll be really interesting to pick the brain of the master. So Dustin, thank you so much for joining us. Jim, I, I, it's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your history in the appraisal industry and where you started and, and get started with that for the people that may not know who you are? Sure. Yeah. So I live in Idaho. Uh, I was raised in an appraiser home. And uh, because of that, I I, uh, vowed I would never become an appraiser. Uh, (laughs) I uh, got into college and realized that uh, I didn't have a whole lot of choice in uh, in making money. Uh, So I went crawling back to daddy and asked him to train me, which he did. Uh, Back then, it was a little different than it is today. Uh, He trained me across state lines. Uh, He didn't have to accompany me uh, accompany me on on many inspections. And so we did a long distance training. Uh, that was uh, 27 years ago. Lots has, has changed over the years. About the first dozen years, Jim, I did, you know, I did things like everybody else, meaning I was a single person entity. I answered all my own phone calls, emails, scheduling, visiting courthouses, taking pictures, taking them into the one hour photo, pasting them on the, uh, on the reports and hand delivering them to the lenders. I did it all. And then I found a better way of doing things and ended up expanding my business and, and really creating a true appraisal firm, if you will. And that led, of course, to teaching other appraisers how to do that. And, and that, of course, led to the mentoring and to the coaching, which I am uh, doing most of today. I don't do a whole lot of uh, boots on the ground appraisals anymore. Uh, I do still have my appraisal firm, but mostly I'm doing some coaching and mentoring on a daily basis, uh, which I love. Well, that, that's awesome. Here, I always do love hearing the stories of the old way to do appraisals where, you know, Joan always talks about she even had like a mimeograph and it just blows my mind, you know, having to wait for photos, having to wait for all that stuff when now it's all on your phone. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a different world for sure. Well, Dustin, the reason we have you on today is I saw on one of the social media posts, somebody got on there to rant and said, no appraiser can do 40 to 50 appraisers, appraisals in a month. And if they are, they're either lying or not very good at their job. And you had a great response to that. And I wanted to get on and, and just discuss this topic on how we can change the paradigm of the appraisal process for appraisers. Well, you hit the key word, Jim, and that that uh, was in my response is the word paradigm. You know, Stephen Co- Covey taught uh, the idea of paradigm and, and looking at things through a different lens. The problem with the question, and by the way, these questions come up pretty frequently in social media. Uh, they come from a standpoint of, you know, an appraiser might overhear that somebody is doing, you know, rather than doing one appraisal a day, they might be doing two or three a day. And they think, well, that's just impossible. The only way to do that is to cut corners. The only way to do that is to, is to turn out shoddy work. And, and my response is, well, maybe there's a different way of looking at it. In other words, maybe maybe we need to change our paradigm. Maybe we need to change the lens that we're looking through. Because if you're talking about a single person entity, which I alluded to at the beginning of the of the cast today, you know, which I did for 12 years, then doing two to three appraisals a day, yeah, that would probably be pretty impossible unless you're turning out pretty shoddy work. However, if you relook at your appraisal business as a true business, not just from the technician standpoint, but put your business hat on, your CEO hat on. Is there a different way of looking at the appraisal world? I figured that out several years ago. I teach other appraisers how to figure that out as well. And I can tell you that I know hundreds of appraisers who do multiple appraisals a day, do high quality work, but they only do it through a different paradigm. So yes, She's right. The, the poster, the original poster is correct, that if you are doing this all by yourself, that would be pretty impossible to kick out that kind of work. But let's look at it through a different paradigm. Let's get back to talking about what some of those things are to help appraisers. I have a quick ad I'm going to read. An accurate appraisal is only as good as the data you collect, especially when it comes to measuring GLA. Right from the homeowner's smartphone, Remote Val uses advanced property scanning and LIDAR to generate exterior room sketches with GLA dimensions. Testing shows Remote Val is accurate within two inches when compared to standard tape and laser measurements. Remote Val is fast, easy to use, and completely free for appraisers. To see a demo of Remote Val in action, visit incenteram.com. Well, thanks, Dustin. Let's get back to talking about what are some of those things that appraisers can do to lighten their load 
on themselves and and make it so it's not such a burden to do everything themselves. Yeah, no, it's a great, great, great question. Before I get into that, let me just kind of reestablish what we were talking about before the break there. And that is the, the paradigm that we look through. Uh, you know, let me just give you a quick analogy, Jim, if you don't mind. Just around the corner from me, there's an individual, uh, her and her husband are on this schedule. I think they've built seven homes together. They build a home together about every three years. So what they'll do is they'll buy the land, they'll build the home, and they pretty much do it all. I, we watched them build this home in our neighborhood over about a two and a half, three year period. And, and literally, there were hardly any subcontractors. They, they did most of the work all by themselves. Wow. It was a long process. And, and it's an amazing, their house is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Around the corner from them is an individual that, that builds probably, I would guess, 10 to 15 homes a year. What is the difference? The difference, and by the way, these are gorgeous homes as well, beautiful homes, uh, luxury homes, custom built homes, uh, but 10 to 15 a year versus one every three years, right? The difference is their system. The individual that does 10 to 15 homes a year has a crew, has a system, has technology, has equipment, has all of the things that you would, that you would think that a builder would have, right? And the homes are no less quality. In fact, they're, they're as, as equal, if not better quality than the individuals, the, the mom and pop, if you will, that live uh, across the street from me. The difference is their systems. And so to your question, that really is where we need to start. From the very beginning in my coaching and mentoring, when I teach other appraisers, I've, I've always taught uh, the three-leg stool approach. And the three-leg stool approach to successful business is number one, getting systems in place. Um, Michael Gerber has a great book out there. If you haven't read it, everyone needs to read it. It was written for appraisers, if you will. There's the, the word appraiser is not found in the book, but, but uh, you'll know what I mean when you get into the book, right? The, Michael Gerber's e-myth is all about the technician turned business owner and how we can start looking through the lens of a business owner rather than just the technician. Uh, treat your business as if you're going to franchise. Now, that doesn't mean you need to franchise. That means you set up your business in such a way that if you could replicate it, if you wanted to replicate it, you could because the systems are in place. That's leg number one. Leg number two is technology. You just talked about technology just a few minutes ago, this LiDAR technology that, uh, that is new. It's amazing. I've used LiDAR and I've scanned homes and it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. The, 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 the approach that we can take now, very similar to what we talked about at the first of the, of the program, where I used to stand in line at Walmart one hour photo, right? I don't have to do that anymore because technology has, has uh, progressed. So in my mind, technology is not a cost, it's an investment. That's the second leg of the stool. And number three, and this is absolutely critical, this is probably the most important leg of the stool and that's human resources. I am convinced you cannot grow very big without a great team surrounding you. But if you put those three legs in place, the systems, the technology, and the human resources, you absolutely can do multiple appraisals a day because you're now focused on the most important part, right? In other words, you are the professional. The most important part of the appraisal process is probably choosing comps, making adjustments, supporting those adjustments, the narrative surrounding that, but it's probably not pulling the plat map and sticking it in the report. It's probably not downloading the map. It's probably not labeling the photos, right? Those things can be done through systems and technology and human resources that you can oversee, that you can supervise, but that can allow you to do have more throughput without suffering quality. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I have another question for you on the hiring and how to handle that. Let me read one more quick ad before we get into that. Looking for better turn times, the ability to automate routine tasks and stay in compliance with your appraisal management processes? Evo, state-of-the-art appraisal management technology for residential and commercial real estate lenders and AMCs was built with the user in mind. Evo streamlines the appraisal process with configurable workflow design that automates 100% of routine tasks. It alerts you along the way and gives you powerful reports to make timely decisions. It's the only platform on the market with total customizations out of the box without IT development or intervention. Find out more at globaldms.com or call 877-866-2747. So Dustin, before we, we stop for that break, you were talking about hiring and the process that goes along with that. What do you say to the people that are just say, oh, it's just easier for me to do it myself? Right. And, you know, I can't hire the right people. What do you say to those kind of people? 
I say, go for it. I say, continue doing what you're doing. Uh, I say that if you want to continue to get what you've always got, continue to do what you've always done. Remember, I did that for 12 years and found some success in it, but I also found a better way of doing things. Now, let me be clear. This isn't for everybody. Some appraisers simply want to run their own business and they want to be the person in charge. And there is a huge uh, benefit, if you will, in the old saying that if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. OK, I, I subscribe to that to a certain level. I understand that to a certain level. But if you look at it, let's let's look at another profession uh, just briefly, Jim. And that is the doctor. Right. If you walked into the doctor's office and the doctor was the one that greeted you, took your blood pressure, weighed you, uh, took you back into the room, did the initial, you know, the initial questions. And, and then, of course, the diagnosis and out the door and then was the one that called you for the bill. Right. You would think that's a little bit strange. Yeah. Right. It could be done, but it would be a little bit strange. Why? Because the doctor understands that the doctor is professional. She's the one that that's gone to the schooling, has the experience, has the expertise to be able to diagnose. And she, the doctor, should be focused on being the doctor. She shouldn't be the one taking your blood pressure. Now, that doesn't mean that the blood pressure isn't important. That doesn't mean that the blood pressure shouldn't be taken properly. And that doesn't mean that she shouldn't oversee it and look at the results and wonder, oh, my gosh, did my nurse do this correctly, right? In other words, she's still ultimately in charge. And I, when I say she, I mean the doctor is ultimately in charge of the overall product, okay? Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> But the doctor, that's the smart doctor, understands that it's a system that she sets up and that she hires the right people, puts them in the right seats on the bus, trains them properly, oversees and manages them so that she can be focused on the most important part of her practice. How is an appraiser any different, right? We are professionals. Shouldn't we be focused on the most important part of the appraisal process? And that, again, Jim, is not pulling plat maps. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, and, I agree with your whole take on the technology as well. I, you know, everyone's always looking for a better way to do things and we should embrace this technology and make our lives easier um, as we go through this process. It's, it's just so funny to me to see, you know, some of the people that have an experience when they come to like the valuation expo and see it firsthand, they're like, Oh, wow. And like, you see the light bulb over their head and you're like, Oh yeah, this will make my life so much easier. So I, I really do appreciate that part of it that um, I have one last ad to read and then let's talk about your coaching a little bit. Sure. If you've grown frustrated with endlessly pursuing new appraisal work and not reaping any of, any of the benefits, Metro West is here to help. They understand and work to alleviate the pain points commonly felt by appraisers to enable personal and financial growth for their staff. After all, they've been owned and operated by appraisers since the company opened in 1987. Metro West Appraisal is an equal opportunity employer, and they're always looking for certified residential real estate appraisers to join their team. Visit metrowestappr.com slash careers or email careers at metrowestappr.com. Well, Dustin, I know you said um, in your, in your uh, intro that, you know, you've moved into the coaching more than the day-to-day -day appraisal. Can you tell us a little bit about what goes on with that? Yeah, so uh, about 10 years ago, Jim, I started uh, a company called The Appraiser Coach. And the purpose of The Appraiser Coach is to mentor and coach other small business owners, specifically appraisers, and help them move from the realm of single person entity, if you will, or, or single individual appraisal office to a true appraisal firm where they have help. Now, I do it on all kinds of levels. In fact, many of my clients are still a single person entity, and we're just trying to maximize uh, you know, what they what they can do in and of themselves. In other words, it's not just about hiring. It's not just about human resources. But if you truly want to grow into a firm, and, and when I say a firm, I mean, I mean, hundreds of thousand dollars a year, and multiple appraisals, to where you still got a system that that controls the quality. Uh, that's really where I shine in my mentoring and my coaching people come to me because number one, they want more time. They're tired of working 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week. And I know many of your listeners are nodding their head like, yeah, that's me every single week, right? I can't believe it never slows down. Well, the problem is it's, it's not it that slows down, right? It's you that needs to, to form the proper firm and the proper business model that will allow you to slow down, um, but also to make more money. And so those two, those two things combined, I help appraisers move from the realm of working you know, themselves to death and really living paycheck to paycheck to having a very comfortable lifestyle, 
uh, not just in the amount of money that they're making, but also in the time that I can give them back because they can restructure and retool their appraisal business to be a true appraisal firm. I know the time back would be a huge benefit. Like now that I have kids, I, I don't know where the time has gone. You know, I feel like I don't have enough time in the day every day. So. Well, and, and Jim, I've been on both sides of the fence here. Uh, and, and I think that's an advantage because when someone comes to me and says, Dustin, I'm working 70 hours a week. I, I'm not sleeping. I'm working Saturdays and Sundays. I'm working evenings. I hardly have any time with my significant other and my kids. And, and I'm still just kind of barely making it. I'm, we're basically spending everything that comes in. Uh, this is frustrating. I mean, I empathize. I've been there. I've done that. I did that for 12 years. And I've also been on the other side of the fence where things can be much, much better. And it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you can't wave a magic wand and make this happen. I mean, you've got to put systems in place and technology and, and human resources and manage that, all of that. But I'll tell you, going from 60 to 70 hours a week and living paycheck to paycheck to working maybe 10 to 15 hours a week in your appraisal firm and putting a money, money away in savings because you have more than ample for your needs is a huge, huge change and it's worth all the effort. Yeah. Well, Dustin, I appreciate you joining us today. It's been a great talk with you. Like I said, you were the first the first po appraisal podcast we heard. And, you know, we really enjoy all that you do for the appraisal industry. And, and thank you for your time. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Jim. Uh, people can go to my website, theappraisercoach.com, if they're interested in that podcast or my free blog uh, to learn a little bit more about what I do. I appreciate you having me on, Jim. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Dustin. And thanks to our listeners and our uh, sponsors for helping us put these on. If you have an idea for a future Buzzcast or would like to be interviewed, reach out to us at info at appraisalbuzz.com. Thanks and have a great day.